I swear, if this dude doesn't put Naruto in it this time, I'm... The heck is that? Welcome to another edition of your favorite anime characters as a Pokemon. As you can see from the background, maybe, can't really tell, but I'm moving very soon. I'm finally leaving my apartment in Chicago tonight to head over to Texas where I'll be living for who knows how long. I do tend to move a lot, but I'm very excited to head over there and spend the holidays with my family as well as the next year. Having my own office is going to be awesome, so I'm really excited for all that. I've probably said this every episode now, but this is probably the most exciting one yet. Every character here I love doing research about, and they're almost all from series that I've watched all the way through. So if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button and check out the previous episodes in the description or floating around you right now, or maybe after this video is done, you know, you can rewatch the other ones. I've really enjoyed doing this series, and this will definitely be the last episode for this year, but I'm looking forward to doing more in 2021, and for hopefully things in general to get better next year. I can't wait for what the future holds, so let's get to what you guys came here for. It is time for some anime. Okay, things got a little bit too serious during that last one, so let's Brighten up the mood, bring some cuteness onto the table with everyone's favorite demon child, Nezuko! The younger sister of the protagonist from Demon Slayer, who was tragically turned into a demon in like the first episode. Which is why she is a dark type, known as evil type in Japanese. Little fun fact for you there. Nezuko isn't evil by choice, as she can't help being a demon, but she tries her dang best to not eat her brother's face off. Which is actually a reference to one of the moves you can see on this list here, but let's go down the line starting off with Mega Kick, her most devastating attack, a clear reference to when Nezuko clean kicked off a demon's head right off from his neck which is even further enhanced by her ability pure power and this could be a reference to how much power she gains from just being a demon but it could also be a little pun on how pure of a character she is you know when something's just too dang wholesome to be alive people tend to call it pure Next we've got Minimize, which is a reference to Nezuko's ability to change her body size, whether to make it bigger or smaller in this case, so she can fit in her brother's back box. Or burrow herself underground like a diglet to protect herself from the sun's deadly rays. Cause I guess demons are like twilight vampires or something. I debated giving her crunch, but given how Nezuko's like the only demon that doesn't want to eat humans, she doesn't really get to do all that much crunching. And then I found out Jawlock is actually a thing. It is the signature exclusive move to Dreadnought, and it's still a dark type move, which fits in with her being dark type. Her jaw is literally locked in place by the bamboo muzzle thing. So of course, her move is jaw lock. And finally, we've got baby doll eyes. This one it might surprise some of you, but Nezuko, I don't think I'm the only one. Definitely not the only one that thinks she might just have some of the cutest anime eyes of all time. Especially when she's in her small form. This is just like... <laughs> No one can resist the charm of Nezuchan. So the next character is very similar to Luffy in that it was one of the most requested characters and probably one of the most popular anime characters of all time, but it's a show that I'm not all that familiar with. It's Natsu from Fairy Tail, AKA Salamander, the Fire Dragon Slayer. And I've seen like the first few seasons of Fairy Tail. I don't remember exactly where I left off, but I definitely never finished the show, so I don't know about a lot of Natsu's crazy abilities he gets later on. But Natsu is going to be a fire and dragon type because his main thing is using fire magic, but it's more specifically called the fire dragon slayer magic because like a literal dragon was his foster father. See, I remember some things about the show, but we're starting off with Flamethrower, which is a reference to Natsu's Fire Dragon Roar, his signature move and probably the one he uses the most. Later on, this move gets more and more powerful, so you could substitute Flamethrower for something like a Fire Blast, but I just felt like visually the Dragon Roar fits the most with Flamethrower. 
Anyway, I've chosen Clangorous Soul to represent the Dragon Force because even though something like Dragon Dance could make more sense, it only raises your attack and speed in Pokemon, whereas Clangorous Soul actually raises all of your stats at the cost of a little bit of HP because, you know, no pain, no gain. And Natsu does use a variety of moves. Some of them are ranged magic attacks. Sometimes he gets up in there with his fist, which brings us to the next move, Outrage. It's gonna be his stab dragon move here. I don't have an exact attack that I really wanna reference this to, but I guess you could see it as any of Natsu's more physical get up there and beat you up kind of attacks. But finally, we're gonna have Eruption, which is one of the most devastating fire moves out there. Basically, all of Natsu's finishing moves end in a fiery explosion, and what better to represent that than Eruption. I actually learned a lot about this show doing research for this video, like, apparently Natsu gets lightning infused into his attacks at one point, and so I thought about including something like Zekrom's signature Fusion Bolt. We could have also included Galarian Moltres' signature Fiery Wrath, representing Natsu's Darkness Flame. Apparently he gets a lot of crazy moves later on in the show, and it kind of makes me want to go back and watch it. Natsu would have probably had every single fire move in the Pokemon games. Like, this dude fire punches, he blaze kicks, he flare blitzes, you know? I had to choose four in the end. This actually happens with a couple of other characters you'll see later on too. Now that Fairy Tail is all done, you know, maybe it'd be worth going back and watching it. Let me know what you guys think and what you thought of Natsu's moveset, which by the way, his ability is Flash Fire. Salamander literally consumes flames. This man knows no limits when it comes to spicy hot eating. Now back to a show that I do know, we got Ryuko Matoi from Kill a Kill, an anime that's about as hard to describe as what keeps me up at night. So the main character Ryuko is a human, hence the normal type, but she dons a battle armor made of something called life fibers, which is basically a super powered sentient armored suit called Senketsu, which is literally battle armor, hence her ability being that, which protects the Pokemon from critical hits. You don't want your main character dying out of nowhere. And her main weapon of choice is a giant scissor that she uses as a sword. So that's why she's half steel type, of course. Slash is gonna be her basic attack, just, you know, slashing her scissor blade. Even without Senketsu, she can still definitely deal some damage just with her sword. And speaking of, her next move is gonna be Swords Dance, because that is the best way I can describe any of this show's fight scenes. It's basically a dance of swords and naked people. Yeah, this isn't really rated PG or anything. I do recommend checking it out. It's honestly one of the most intriguing and like visually pleasing shows I've ever seen, but it does get a little frisky here and there. You could also take the term dance a bit loosely and consider the transformation that she undergoes whenever she puts on Senketsu as her swords dance, you know, powering up. And as I mentioned before, her main weapon of choice is the scissor blade, or at least one half of it. I'm not gonna spoil where the other half is, but that's why she's got the move X Scissor, cause it has scissor in the name. But her ultimate move is going to be the Behemoth Blade, which is actually the signature move of Zacian in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where it basically becomes a giant sword and slashes down on enemies, doing more damage against gigantified Dynamax Pokemon, which Ryuko definitely has to deal with as we get later into the show. The enemies just get bigger and crazier, and her ultimate move when she does get the two halves of the Scissor Blade, the level Levels of destruction just get pretty crazy in this one. You could even say they grow to behemoth proportions, so behemoth blade kind of fits. <laughs> you know where this is going. Dio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the series titular villain who has hunted down the Joestar family for generations, and today we're focusing on his first incarnation, otherwise known as Vampire Dio from the first season, Phantom Blood. He is a fighting and dark type because all the Joe Bros are freaking swole, hence the fighting type, but because he is a vampire now, 
had to get a little evil in him, so he is also half dark type. I know a lot of you probably wanted to see Dio from Stardust Crusaders with his infamous stand, Zawarudo! But since we had Jotaro in the previous episode, I thought I would mix things up with my Jojo knowledge and hit us up with something a little more classic. And that brings us to his first move, Night Slash, his standard vampire swipe, and his preferred way, I think, of taking out enemies, at least until he discovers some of his other crazier moves, which you're gonna get to, but... Usually the Night Slash is comboed with Leech Life, and literally sucks the life out of your enemies, giving it back to yourself, which is what Dio does to most of his victims in the first season. Look at him sucking him up like they're juicy juice, ew. This next move might just be my favorite of the whole episode, and it is gonna be Screech. Yeah, that's, that's a Screech. Now I mentioned how Dio gets some even crazier vampire abilities later on in the season, and one of them is the power to freeze his enemies by simply touching them. However, there's not that many physical ice moves in Pokemon, aside from maybe something like Ice Punch or Ice Fang. So I decided to combine this final move with one of his other signature abilities. Dio, for whatever reason, just can shoot lasers out of his eyes. Much like Galarian Articuno with its signature move, the Freezing Glare, which is a psychic move that deals damage and has a chance to freeze the enemy. So I kind of combined both of Dio's signature vampire abilities into one Pokemon move here. The laser eyes that can freeze the enemy. Plus you just can't resist that sinister, sexy glare. Damn it, I'm falling under a spell again. Get away from me, you vampire freak! Back! Back I say! Even when Dio is somehow defeated, this dude just keeps on coming back. Which is why his ability is Regenerator. If you switch the Pokemon out and then bring it into battle later on, it'll actually gain back some of its health. In the case of Dio, he gains back all of his health because this dude can literally reattach his arms. Even his head can just live on in a goldfish tank thing like Futurama. And then he attaches his head onto like another guy's body. It's... If you've never seen this anime, now you might get an idea of why it's called Jojo's Bizarre adventures. It ain't no bo 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 but it does get pretty wild. Let's see, we covered Luffy, Natsu, and Dio. Those are probably the most requested characters, right? We're, we're not missing anyone. Water. Earth. Fire. Air. I already know what you're gonna say. I know Avatar is not an anime. It is a Western produced animation, but it is very heavily inspired by Japanese anime. So I wanted to include at least one character. I mean, the character, and that is of course Avatar Aang, the last airbender. Because he was born an airbender, an air nomad specifically, he is of course a flying type I could have made him normal flying type because he is a human technically, but then all of the humans on the Avatar world would be like normal fire, normal ground, and that just seemed kind of lame. So he's going to be a pure flying type who was able to master the four elements, which is why his four Pokemon moves are of course going to reference the four elements. I wanted flying to be his most powerful move since it was the element that he started off with from birth, but Hurricane is the strongest special flying move out there and it's tied with some of the other ones, so I guess I could have gone with something like Aeroblast, but it just felt weird having Aeroblast have less power than like his water or fire bending, you know? So obviously Hydro Pump represents water bending in its most powerful form, Fire Blast for fire bending, and Earth Power for earth bending, which is a little bit of a weaker move compared to the other ones, but well, there might be some rock moves that have more power out there, but I guess ground just fits more with earth bending. So I just gave him earth power, whatever. Let's just say it's his weakest one since it's like the opposite of air. Anyway, his ability is where Aang really shines, and I've of course decided to give him Protean, the signature ability of Greninja, which allows the user to change to whatever the type of the move that it's about to use in, really showcasing Aang's mastery over all four elements. So whenever he's gonna use one of the four attacks, he'll turn into that type. 
I really think Protean is the perfect ability for Aang, but I did debate giving him something else like Zen Mode to represent the Avatar state, which is when Aang gets critically low on health, he activates like God Mode basically, and all of his past Avatar lives combine power to like help him do some super OP plot armor move, which definitely fits with Zen Mode. It only activates when you're low on health, so maybe that could be like his hidden ability. Or you could give him like a Z crystal and the Z move could be the avatar state. Like when he turned into a giant water creature, you know, that could be like the water Z move. Protein just fits too well with the avatar and the fact that there's four elements, four move slots in Pokemon, this guy could literally be in one of the games. Or at least his flying bison, Appa. Please game freak. Flying Bison in the next game? Anyway, that is it. 10 anime characters as Pokemon. I am definitely not forgetting anyone this time, right? I got all the characters in the comments. Certainly not the most famous anime character of this generation. Hey, come on, I, I got some of you, right? We got Naruto, baby, number one, believe it! The strongest ninja to ever come out of the Hidden Leaf Village. And this is another show that obviously I know of, and I've seen a whole bunch of episodes. Back in the day on Toonami, I saw the original series, and then I kept up with Shippuden for a while when it was releasing in Japanese. Like, I've seen the whole Akatsuki and Pain arc. But I kind of fell off and I haven't seen the end of the series, so please no spoilerinos. Well, actually I'm gonna have spoilers in this video, so one step at a time, guys. Alright, let's start with Aura Sphere, which is gonna be his most basic form of attack. Well, that's debatable, I guess, but it's the Rasengan, the little ball of energy that Naruto launches at opponents. Aura Sphere is kind of a move that could represent any type of ball of energy that an enemy throws at you in any type of anime. Like, Dragon Ball's got its Key Blast, you know, Yu Yu Hakusho's got balls of energy. But if there's any character that fits Aura Sphere more than any other, it is definitely Naruto's Rasengan. That is, it is just a little ball of energy. You could pack even more power in there, which we'll get to soon, but next is actually Naruto's most famous move, the Shadow Clone Jutsu, which is represented of course by Double Team in Pokemon. Pretty self-explanatory one, although it did catch me off guard to see Galarian Articuno using the Shadow Clone in the uh, Crown Tundra not too long ago. But Naruto's Shadow Clones are useful for more than just evading his opponents like in Pokemon. In fact, the Shadow Clones can actually help him to even further his ability of the Rasengan by infusing it with wind energy, making the Wind Rasengan Shuriken, I, I, I forgot the name, which is represented here by Aeroblast. The biggest struggle I have with this series is just nailing it down to just four moves, but I decided to go with the four most iconic or most recognizable attacks, and that is why Naruto's final move is Transform. Nobody forgets the sexy jutsu. Finally, we have his ability for which I've chosen rivalry since Naruto Sasuke is one of the greatest anime rivalry of all time, only rivaled probably by like Goku, Vegeta, maybe like, nah, Deku, Bakugo don't even come close, dude. Naruto Sasuke is the anime rivalry and that is why I made it his ability. <laughs> you thought it was over. Again, didn't ya? Our first mega evolution of the series is going to be Naruto's Sage Mode, or I guess more specifically the Six Paths Mode, Six Path Sage Mode. Again, I haven't seen the end of the show, but I do know that one of these crazy transformations actually allows Naruto to fly straight up. He fully has mastered the wind element at this point, which is why he is now a fighting and flying type and gains the ability Adaptability, which powers up moves of the same type, making his Aeroblast or Wind Rasengan even that much more powerful. 
Mega Evolution doesn't upgrade your moves, but if I would change some out here, I mean, there's just so many to choose from. You can go for something like Focus Blast, maybe even Shadow Ball, since I know Naruto can also use the power of the Ninetales. I mean, while doing research, I couldn't help but get spoiled to some stuff. This dude basically masters all the elements. He's actually the avatar of the Naruto world. And that is why Naruto is our first Mega Evolution, but there could definitely be some more coming up in a future episode. In fact, I feel like I could dedicate a whole video to just showing off Mega Evolutions of characters we've already had in the series. One particular Saiyan definitely comes to mind, but we'll save that for a future video. Thank you all so much for watching this one. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and let me know what other characters you would like to see in future episodes. I've actually been thinking I might switch things up for the next one and dive specifically into one series. For example, My Hero. What would all the characters in My Hero's types and moves be? Or at least for Class 1A, because there's a lot of freaking characters, but I am down to take this monumental task on that will serve no one in any real meaningful way but the weebs will appreciate it and so will i actually I have a lot of fun researching for these and just learning more about anime that i haven't really kept up with or don't know that much about like in the case of sailor moon hope you guys enjoy it as well thank you again for watching and i'll catch you in the next one